This is one of those questions that divides parents. Is Centre Parks worth it? I now feel qualified to wade into this debate because we have just come back from a week's holiday at Centre Parks Elvedon with our two children aged seven and nine. Whether you're here because you are considering booking Centre Parks and wondering if it's worth the high price tag, or maybe you've already been yourself, you're a bit of an expert and you have very strong opinions on this debate, I'm gonna talk about whether I think Centre Parks is worth it, what the accommodation's like, what the activities are like, what the overall centre is like, just to give you an idea of what to expect. And I'm gonna give you some very, very honest views on staying at Centre Parks. Let's start with the most important thing, the cost. We went during August, which is the school summer holidays, which is when Centre Parks, and let's face it, all other holidays are at their most expensive. And you really do pay a premium here. I checked how much exactly the same accommodation would cost us during September once the kids were back at school and it was over a thousand pounds cheaper. It's really significant. For our week at Centre Parks Elvedon, we stayed in a new style executive lodge with two bedrooms. This cost us 2,648 pounds. Again, this is only one week and this doesn't include food or any of the activities apart from access to the pool we're gonna get into that a little bit more in a sec. However, that's not all it cost me for the accommodation because I also paid the extra 70 pounds to get us a lodge in a central area. And I am really, really glad that I did pay this money because with two little kids who can walk reasonably far these days, but do still get tired out, toing and froing from the lodge all day, going to swimming, going to other activities, going to the park, going for a little walk, I was really glad that we were central to where everything was this was worth the money. But I think what it was for me was the start of a theme with Centre Parks, which is that just because you've paid for the accommodation, it doesn't mean that you've paid for the holiday. There's a lot more added costs to come when you go to Centre Parks if you're gonna make the most of it. With the actual accommodation itself, I was really, really impressed. When we got there, it was really clean. We had two bedrooms, one room with twin beds, one room with a large double. The beds were really comfortable. Each of the rooms had an ensuite bathroom. The kids' bedroom had a shower in there and we had a shower and a bathtub in there. And there's also an extra toilet in the accommodation as well. The kitchen, living room and dining room is all open plan. In the kitchen, you've got a fridge and a tiny little box freezer, which isn't gonna fit very much in it. And you've also got a wine fridge as well. Centre parks throw in your towels for the bathrooms and linens for the beds as well. We also had a midweek towel change. So they did send us brand new towels. Also included is three dishwasher capsules when you arrive so that you can use the dishwasher. And there was also some oven gloves and also some sponges so that you could tidy up and wipe down the surfaces in the kitchen. Outside, there's a really nice patio with a barbecue stand where you can put a disposable barbecue and four chairs. The living room is a really comfy space and I think they've made really, really good use of the space here by having this corner sofa and then they've got the TV built into the breakfast bar surrounding the actual kitchen. So we were staying at Centre Parks Elfden. I haven't stayed at any other Centre Parks, but having done my research before we actually booked this one, my knowledge of it is that they're pretty much all similar principles in that you've got lodges circled around a village centre. And in that village centre, you've got a supermarket, you've got a couple of little gift shops, and then you've got various restaurants. You've also got the swimming pool as well. Now there is a spa at Centre Parks Elvedon. I didn't actually use that, so I can't comment on it, but just so you know, there is one there. If you wanna have a little break from the kids, hand them over to your partner or maybe grandparents that have come with you, you can go home and have a little relax there. So the key things included in that accommodation price were obviously the lodge where we were staying in and also the car park. So we were able to leave our car in the main car park. You can drive up to your lodge on the day that you arrive to unload your stuff, but you cannot leave your car parked directly outside your lodge. You have to then return it to the car park, which is near the main entrance. They don't charge any extra for access to the lovely outdoor playground, which was newly refurbished in 2023 and was really cool. Both of my kids liked it. I think there's a really nice mixture in that playground for younger and slightly older kids. Climbing frames, things to swing around on, different types of slides, swings. They really, really loved the playground. That kept them busy for quite a few hours. And then the thing that I think is really, really important that Centre Parks includes in that accommodation price is the access to the swimming pool. And the swimming pool is 
amazing. The changing rooms are really, really nice and clean. There's plenty of family changing rooms. I never had a problem finding a family changing room for me and the girls. There are plenty of lockers. All you have to do is use your wristband that opens up your accommodation in order to use a locker. The lockers are big enough for me to have put my massive swimming bag into them. The swimming pool itself has so many different areas to explore. There's a wave pool in the central area of the pool. There's a shallower sort of sloping beach area, which is good for little tots and babies if you just want to gently ease them into shallow water. There's different areas of the main pool for kids to explore, including a fun little current area that they can travel through. There's a separate lagoon pool, which kind of feels like it's in a cave, which the kids really like going to. That one's nice and shallow and it's a good place for parents to sit and relax while the kids have a little splash around in the middle. There are a few slides, there's a wild water rapids that you access by going into the outdoor pool. And the other thing really worth noting about the swimming pool is that they had this amazing splash pad. Like the kids weren't particularly excited about the splash pads because I think they've been to them before and they kind of associated them more as being for younger kids or something that you go to outside on a really hot day. But there's tons going on in the splash pad adventure pool area. There's three different flumes for them to go down, which they absolutely love. There's a couple of other different slides and there's also tons of water jets everywhere for them to play with. They really, really love this area. They spend a long time playing in there. Also on poolside, you'll find a Starbucks and a cafe area so parents can sit down. If you've got kids that you don't necessarily need to watch and supervise all of the time, it's really, really good for that. I mean, for us personally, because our kids are seven and nine, we never really got out and had a sit down. We were just in the pool with the kids the whole time. So I can't say enough good things about the swimming pool. The kids absolutely loved it. And the fact that unlimited access to that is included in the price. It's open from 10 a.m. in the morning till nine o'clock at night. If you wanted to, you could go to center parks and enjoy a really, really great week just making use of the swimming pool and the park. So you wouldn't have to spend any additional money on the activities but I think going there in order to get the full experience it is really really worth trying the activities and I think this is where the issue comes in with centre parks and affordability and a value for money because those activities really really add up they really really add to the price of your visit. While we were there we tried a number of different activities the kids did junior quad biking which they absolutely loved in fact they loved it so much that they went back and did it twice one of my favorite activities was the family squash ball wall where you have a normal squash court but the main wall is just a big interactive screen and you can play different games like space invaders and paint splat and the kids just absolutely loved it we were all really really tired by the end of the 45 minute session but it was so worth it it was so much fun we also did the nine hole mini golf which is the first time that the kids had tried golf and they absolutely loved that we all really really enjoyed that one we did junior archery which was good actually because i thought we as the adults wouldn't get a chance to try but because the kids needed one-on-one -on -one supervision with an adult it meant that we got a little go at it as well so that was a really nice experience another day we did bowling and then took ourselves into the arcade so that the kids could play a little bit of air hockey and play on some of the games in there. Now the activities that we actually did are just like a fraction of what's actually available there. There are tons of different things from owl encounters to football sessions and badminton and climbing walls, adventure trails, go-karts. There's tons of different things that kids can try. Your activities are where the cost of your holiday can really significantly ramp up to quite scary levels. For example, they had a teddy bear making station there and that was like 31 pounds per child. They also offered cupcake decorating and there were various different crafty options for them to do. I opted not to do that on this occasion because I felt like things like cupcake decorating and pottery painting, those are things that we can actually do more easily at home. So I opted for more of the outdoorsy stuff and the stuff that we haven't really done before as a family. So as well as the swimming pool and the sports complex, which has got like your squash courts and your badminton courts and your bowling alley, there's also a few shops there. So you've got a sweet shop, there's a Starbucks cafe, there's a Jules there. There are two gift shops in the Village Square area. One of them is the toy shop, which the kids absolutely loved visiting. There's all kinds of different toys in there from stuffed toys to dolls and board games and fidget spinners and even Lego kits. Also in that Village Square is the park market and this is another element of center parks that I think is a little bit controversial. The park market has a lot 
in there. There's pretty much everything you could want to get if you don't want to eat out at any of the restaurants or get any takeout while you're at Centre Parks from fresh meat to cook ready meals which I was really really pleased to see those were included because I think that's a good option if you don't want to spend the premium on getting a takeaway or going out to a restaurant but you don't really want to cook the cook ready meals in the freezer section are a nice option for that however you pay for it you pay for that convenience the prices in this supermarket are wow just wow it was like eight pounds for a not tiny disposable barbecue but not a massive one either it was plenty for four of us to cook burgers and sausages on but eight pounds is quite a lot among the other prices that really stood out to me was that they were charging four pounds for a bottle of ketchup some of the prices seem to have been inflated more than others like i thought that the shampoo and conditioner there was really expensive generally speaking the inflation on prices seemed to be anything from like 10 percent more to 40% more compared to normal supermarket prices. Look, they've got you captured there, I get it. They're capitalizing on the fact that they have a captive audience there and it's so much more convenient to go to the park market than it is to walk all the way to the car park, get in your car, leave the site and go to a supermarket. One of my key tips if you are going to centre parks is to bring key supplies with you. Bring the stuff that you're gonna be using definitely every single day with you. Bring stuff like milk, bring stuff like spread, bring stuff like any table sauces that you're gonna to wanna to have with a barbecue. Bring a disposable barbecue with you. Bring all of the stuff that you need to make for sandwiches for your lunchtime, that's what we tried to do. So we paid a visit to the Sainsbury's, which is only around about 10 minutes away from Centre Parks Elvedon, just before we arrived, so that we had all of our fresh food that we needed through little snacks for the kids, so that we didn't have to rely on the park market too much because that park market is really expensive. You really don't feel like cooking while you're at Centre Parks. There's a number of different restaurants with different types of cuisine, and you can also order takeaway to your lodge using the restaurant runner option. We ate at a few of the different restaurants. The kids really, really liked Las Iguanas because there are robot servers that bring out your food. I personally could have taken or left the food. I didn't really think it was that great at Las Iguanas. Bella Italia was really nice. Obviously the pizza was exactly as you would expect from Bella Italia. We also had an Indian takeaway one night, which I really enjoyed. It wasn't like the best Indian takeaway I've ever had, but it satisfied a craving for Indian takeaway. And we also ate at Huck's, which is like their American bar and grill. We had brunch one day at the Pancake House, which to be honest, I think was actually my favorite of the meals that we had. Just having some plain old bacon and pancakes is just so delicious, but the kids really love the pancake house because of all the different sweet pancake options that they could have. So they managed to have ice cream with pancakes and some chocolate sauce for breakfast, which they absolutely loved. And just like with Hux, the pancake house also has an indoor soft play area so that adults can sit and relax a little bit while the kids go off and play. I had read a lot about going to centre parks before we went and one of the recommendations that I saw come up again and again was to get things booked in advance before you arrive at centre parks if you want to do activities or eat out at restaurants just to guarantee that you have that place. So I did that. I went ahead and booked some, a couple of restaurants that I thought we might want to eat at and I booked the bulk of our activities. And one of the great features of the Centre Parks website is that you can look at your itinerary on your online account and just see what activities you've got coming up and any gaps in your schedule just in case you want to fill them with other stuff to do. However, I personally found that once we were there, there were still plenty of activities available. To a degree, you can wing the holiday. You will be able to book certain things while you are there. If there is something that you desperately, desperately, definitely want to do, I would book that in advance. So bringing everything together, what are my overall thoughts about Centre Parks? There's no escaping from the fact that Centre Parks is expensive. It costs a lot of money to go there. I think £2,700 just for accommodation, not even including travel, not including any food, just for your accommodation. Yes, you've got access to the park and to the swimming pool, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for a one week holiday. And I'll admit, I went into Centre Parks thinking, I don't think I'm gonna like this. I'm not really an outdoorsy adventure kind of person. I'm really more of like a city break or a lazing by the pool type of person. So I went into it thinking, I'm not really sure this is exactly gonna be my cup of tea. But the thing with Centre Parks is that 
even if it's not value for money, which I don't think it is, and also in previous years, the consumer champion witch has also said that it's one of the worst value for money holidays that you can have in the UK. But all of that aside, the thing with centre parks is the point of it isn't that it's value for money, the point of it is that it's easy. Everything is there and convenient. There's a ton of different activities, so you can find something that's gonna suit the taste of the people there, whether you've got grandparents with you who wanna go off and play tennis, or whether you've got adventurous kids that are gonna wanna go up and explore the obstacle courses in the trees, or hurl themselves off of a platform onto a giant cushion. I remember hearing some advice, something once about holidays, and it's really, really stuck with me, that you are only as happy as your least happy child. And I just think that is so, so true. You have to know your limits as a family when booking a holiday and try and find a balance for what is going to keep the kids happy, keep any whinging about being tired or bored to a minimum, but also enable you as a parent to relax. And the thing with centre parks was that I really do feel that I relaxed. I mean, we were busy, we were on our feet like all the time, either going swimming or going for a walk or we were going and doing an activity. But because it was so safe and so chilled and there was so much to keep the kids busy, I was happy because everyone else was happy. I just think this is a formula that really, really works for kids and for families. And this is why Centre Parks is so popular. This is why they do so well. This is why people are prepared to pay the money. It's not because it's value for money. It's because it's easy. Like I would recommend it. I did find it to be worth the cost because we came away with great memories and we had like a lovely week together. What I want to know now guys is what do you think? Have you been to centre parks? Do you rate it? What do you think is great about it? What don't you like about it? And do you think it's worth that price tag? Let me know in the comments, I'm so excited to hear your views on this.